He lives in a pineapple under the sea and everybody loves him. Okay, maybe not everyone. There are plenty of other fish in the sea though, or in this case, villains. But the question is, which of the villains in Bikini Bottom is the most dastardly and despicable? You know, we really want to know. Unhand that penny or the arm comes off! Today, we're going down, 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 down to the bottom of the sea to determine who truly deserves the lowest spot in Davy Jones' locker. What's going on, guys? I'm Brad with Wicked Binge, and this is SpongeBob SquarePants Villains, Evil to Most Evil. Scary. Now, when it comes to choosing SpongeBob villains, we have a couple of rules. Firstly, all these villains have to come from either the TV show or the movies. No villains from other forms of media, like Roboplankton and Battle for Bikini Bottom. Secondly, for TV show villains, they must be the main villain of at least one episode. So with all that said, let's start with the least villainous and work our way down to the most evil. First up on our list, we have the sweetest of the foes, Madam Hagfish. When we first meet her in The Curse of the Hex, she looks like a regular old woman who just wants a Krabby Patty. One Krabby Patty, please. However, due to not having the money and the Krusty Krab closing, Mr. Krabs just tells her to take a hike. SpongeBob, being the kind-hearted individual he is, decides to give her two Krabby Patties on the house. Of course, Mr. Krabs catches on and stops SpongeBob, leading to her being angry at him and cursing the Krusty Krab. This seems to be an overreaction at first, but we do learn that she is much more reasonable. She compromises and asks for a golden coin in return for lifting the curse. And what was her curse exactly? Just putting a sign out front saying that the store was closed, which anyone could have found out and removed. She didn't even use a curse on the place, not wanting to waste a real hex on him. In comparison to other villains, this is one of the easier villains to overcome. She really didn't leave any lasting harm, and it was resolved rather easily. She just wanted to teach Mr. Krabs a lesson and not being as cheap as he is. And honestly, that's pretty understandable. Next up, our second least evil villain is Carl. Being the fish that Mr. Krabs sells the restaurant to, he starts his takeover and rebrands the restaurant to be the Krabby O Mondays. He upgrades the Krusty Krab, adding giant TV screens, automated cash registers, and an automated Krabby Patty making machine, using gray sludge and just spray painting it to look like a Krabby Patty. The food is definitely a downgrade. However, legally, he really isn't doing anything that wrong. He's just acting like a boss, and he's much more friendly than Mr. Krabs, and doesn't seem to be as money-hungry as he is. That said, he does have a couple of flaws. He doesn't seem to like the idea of people being independent thinkers, even calling in help when Mr. Krabs starts to expose his automatic patties. He also has a giant buff fish as human resources to threaten others into being happy. But that said, given how the original owner of the Krusty Krab is, well, a pretty terrible boss, it's hard to argue that he is a downgrade. And just a heads up, we have a couple of Planktons on this list, due to just how many different versions of him there are. Now in third place, we have one of those Planktons with Plain Crab. He's created after Plankton merged his own DNA with Mr. Krabs, using him in another scheme to steal the Krabby Patty's secret formula. However, something went wrong, and Plain Crab ended up taking over the Krusty Krab and even the Chum Bucket, combining the two stores to create the Krusty Bucket. All right, so how did he get the legal paperwork in order to take over the place? Well, with just a simple handshake from Plankton and Mr. Krabs and stealing the deeds to the restaurants. He may be evil like Plankton, but he certainly is much more polite. He seems to be making SpongeBob and Squidward happy and has even improved the Krabby Patty by just adding a bit of chum. He was even willing to offer Mr. Krabs and Plankton a job, showing that he doesn't hold any grudges. However, what puts him above the others so far is the fact that he took over the restaurants illegally. All right, Two-Face, what's the big idea? Still, it's funny how the combination of Plankton and Krabs ends up being nicer than the two. Moving on, we have the musical worm, the earworm. He ends up burrowing his way into SpongeBob's head after he listens to a catchy song one too many times. One more time! This ends up severely affecting his work life, causing him to get sent home as he's just stuck singing the song over and over again. Thanks to Sandy, she was able to help restrain SpongeBob and identify the problem. How do you get rid of an earworm? Well, with another earworm, mainly Squidward's clarinet. Even if Squidward's playing wasn't that good, it still worked, and he just slept with an angry look. Up next is Mrs. Grizzlepuss. 
a sour old fish judge, she visits the Krusty Krab, where after seeing just how much SpongeBob loves Krabby Patties, she ends up banning them. She's a member of the United Organization of Fish Against Things That Are Fun and Delicious, or to a fadafad for short. It's an odd organization that's been allowed to stay open, but it is legally recognized, and it's also legal for her to arrest SpongeBob and Mr. Krabs after they broke the law by selling Krabby Patties. However, it just takes one taste of a Krabby Patty to sweeten up Mrs. Grizzlepuss. She ends up reversing her decision and legalizing Krabby Patties again. Up next is the rival of the Flying Dutchman, Lord Poltergeist. Once the first mate for the Flying Dutchman, he jumps ship after making off with his gold. Now, while that is bad, considering the kind of person the Flying Dutchman is, we'll cut him a bit of a break. When we meet up with him, he ends up tasking SpongeBob and Patrick with fetching him a new head gasket to fix his ship. He even claimed to have taken their souls and will return them once he gets it. However, we do find out that he really didn't take their souls, and what he instead had was old orange soda left out in the sun for too long. He even indulges Patrick in singing a song for him and giving him pizza, after he rudely calls the ghost a pirate. Albeit, this is in order to get him to believe he is a real ghost, but given how he could have done a lot worse, we do have to give him credit. He even seems disappointed by Patrick's willingness to sacrifice SpongeBob for his sake. We can't forget about Doodle Bob. And look, we understand that Doodle Bob is crazy, and frankly, very violent. He attacked SpongeBob and wanted to replace him. Let's be real, Doodle Bob's existence is very tragic. Unable to come to grips with the fact that he's nothing but a drawing, he lashes out by trying to preserve himself in the real world. Like Frankenstein, Doodle Bob may have just been misunderstood. Up next, we have Master Udon of Karate Island. In this episode, SpongeBob is tricked into thinking he is the king of karate, being invited to an island to celebrate his success with Sandy. However, he ends up getting kidnapped by him and his henchmen, and it's up to Sandy to save him. After beating up all of his minions, Sandy ends up facing off against Master Udon, where she finds out his evil scheme, trying to pawn off a condo to SpongeBob and Sandy. He's not really a karate master and is more of a con man, as seen with trying to dupe Squidward by changing Karate Island into Clarinet Island before he arrives. He isn't above using people's confidence to their own downfall, more than happy to boost their ego to make them more than happy to buy into his condo. He's nothing more than a sleazy con artist, which is why he's higher up than others, but not as high as the rest. Up next, the weather, with weatherman Gail Doppler. Gail's a meteorologist, telling the folks around Bikini Bottom what the weather would be like for the day. Gail Doppler is never wrong. He has never gotten a day wrong and doesn't want to start losing trust when a stray storm cloud by the name of Drizzle, given to him by SpongeBob, left behind by his parents stays in Bikini Bottom, he tries to do his best to change the weather. Such attempts include sucking him up with a reef blower and planning on killing the storm cloud by sending him through a shredder. Thanks to Drizzle's parents and SpongeBob, he was able to be spared from being destroyed, as Drizzle's folks literally blew Gale away. It is just a cloud, but it was sentient. Murder is still murder, and in a world as fantastical as Bikini Bottom, having so many different species of intelligent beings, Gale really should have known better. Next in line, ready to be served, is Bubble Bass. When we first meet him, he started as just a one-time rival for SpongeBob. Tricking SpongeBob into thinking that he didn't serve pickles, he sends him into a downward spiral of depression and doubting his own abilities. You forgot the pickles! Thanks to Mr. Krabs helping out, SpongeBob not only returns, but also uncovers Bubble Bass's secret. He's been hiding the pickles underneath his tongue the whole time, as well as someone's car keys. That was the last we heard of him, at least until the later seasons. Here, he acts like a snobby, jerkish nerd, believing he's smarter and superior than the others. At the height of his ego, he tricks SpongeBob and Patrick into helping him move out and letting them do all the work promising them lunch afterwards. However, when they do arrive and bring everything, Bubble Bass already ate both their lunches. <laughs> ah, what a jerk. Our first of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy's enemies, up next is the Dirty Bubble. As a villain, he only has one purpose in life, and that is making everything dirty. He delights in being dirty and being evil, ranging from robbing banks to ding-dong ditching. Mostly, he just seems to enjoy being a criminal nuisance while spreading his filth. 
However, what would he look like if he cleaned up his act? Well, in Dirty Bubble Returns, we actually get an answer. He would be the clean bubble. After being in jail and getting cleaned, we discover that he was something of a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde complex. When he's dirty, he acts like the villain we all know. When he's clean, however, he's a bright, happy face willing to do whatever it takes to stay clean, even if being dirty is like an addiction to him. Thanks to SpongeBob, he does make a genuine attempt to stay clean, only for a careless Patrick to ruin it. Could we see this form return one day? Maybe, maybe not. Now we arrive at Mr. Krabs. In some respects, we were both too harsh and not harsh enough with him in our SpongeBob Good to Evil list. Hello, I like money. As the owner of the Krusty Krab, he has done plenty of heinous things for a buck. He transformed his restaurant into an eatery jail hybrid, putting many fish at risk of being attacked by convicts, and even lets them out after they start affecting his profits. He let SpongeBob get arrested so he didn't have to pay for the secret ingredient to his Krabby Patties. He was also willing to sell SpongeBob for 62 cents even if he ended up regretting it later. That said, he does have good moments. For one, he was in the Navy and helped his crew fend off an attack from pirates and even earned the respect from his fellow Navy buddies, being called Armor Ab Krabs. Despite sometimes putting money ahead of him, Mr. Krabs cares about SpongeBob. Such moments include teaching SpongeBob how to drive, though it ended with him racking up a high fine. He's reasonable with SpongeBob after seeing him be in three different places at once in order to follow through on promises. And after seeing SpongeBob faint from a lack of Krabby Patties, he's scared for his well-being and asks for the giant vacuum cleaner to give him one to save his health. He even plays along with SpongeBob as supervillain Captain Tightwad. He also tries to be a good parent for Pearl, even if his greed gets in the way from time to time, like with celebrating her birthdays. <laughs> There was one instance where he was concerned for her, where, without the promise of any money, goes around town trying to get as much food as possible in order to feed her to help her stop growing. It's really hard to get a clear reading of Mr. Krabs' morality. He's a total embodiment of greed half the time, or perhaps more than half the time, but is a good person more than occasionally. Coming up onto another classic pre-movie villain, we have the bully, Flats the Flounder. Being first introduced into Mrs. Puff's class as another student, Flats ends up sitting next to SpongeBob, telling him of his desire to beat his butt. Why does he want to beat up SpongeBob? We get no reason for it. All we do know is that he is relentless in his chase, and has even been hinted that he is abusive towards his own father. Now he's gonna kick my butt! His ways of hurting SpongeBob involve tracking him down to his house and trying to run him over with a garbage truck. Even after SpongeBob saved him from a crash in said garbage truck, he still didn't give up his chase and continued to hunt him down. In the end, Flats is just a bully who wants to beat up SpongeBob for no reason. Thank Neptune Sponge is a sponge. Now we're getting to the real threats, starting with the Tattletale Strangler. He ends up getting arrested after SpongeBob calls the cops on him for littering. Escaping from police custody, he intends on making good on his name and plots to strangle SpongeBob for tattling on him. To get close to him, he decides to take up the job of being SpongeBob's bodyguard. But in typical comedic fashion, he gets so fed up with SpongeBob that he actually ends up running away, with SpongeBob being the one chasing after him until he ends up in prison. Situation aside, he is still guilty of many implied attempted murders, so he is a pretty ruthless character. This one's gonna be interesting. We now have Mrs. Pop. True, this is Mrs. Puff, but given just how vastly different she is personality-wise, we're gonna give her the benefit of the doubt and just rank Mrs. Pop by her own actions separate from Mrs. Puff. After losing her ability to puff up, she grows a hatred for SpongeBob, and we mean hatred. I guess we'll have to call you Mrs. Pop. She ends up trying to choke him and gets the idea of getting rid of SpongeBob forever, and in her own words, in the worst way possible. Her plan is to get SpongeBob enrolled into a demolition derby for the sake of getting him killed off. However, it doesn't work, with her getting more angry with the fact he's still alive. Eventually, she gets so fed up that she decides to hop into a ride herself and tries to run him over. And this failed as well. It was the last we see of her, or at least this side of Mrs. Puff, as she got the ability to inflate again. 
How exactly? We don't really know to be honest, but we do know that we really don't want to see her again. For the next of our Planktons, we have Deadeye Plankton. As Plankton's ancestor, he's just as evil as he is. As the outlaw of Deadeye Gulch, he has his own song about how evil he is. This list of misdeeds include robbing the town blind, whipping others, and trying to get the crusty cantina from Mr. Krabs' own ancestor. Without any sheriff to stop him, despite his small size, he was able to get away with misdeeds. However, this was eventually stopped thanks to the arrival and bravery of Sponge Buck Squarepants. Yo, you'll never guess whose ancestor that is. That said, all it took for a stronghold he had over the town was just to be stepped on. The real plankton may be small, but even after being stepped on so many times, he's still feared and hated by others in Bikini Bottom. Uh, while we're here and talking about him, we may as well add in the original Plankton as well. He's no stranger to these lists. Being the most evil person in Bikini Bottom on our good to evil SpongeBob list, and being ranked around the middle in our evil to most evil Nickelodeon villains list. As the rival of Mr. Krabs, he has tried every scheme in his files to beat him and steal the Krabby Patty secret formula. From letting a skunk loose in the restaurant, countless disguises, to even using a giant robot to assault the restaurant, he's done it all and then some. Every scheme in the book, from A to Y. Uh, I mean Z. He's been around for a long time and has done plenty of good and evil deeds. He has helped Squidward with his band and has tricked Squidward into being his friend to get the formula. Do instruments of torture count? He was happy to join in on SpongeBob's party and set up for his party in his own way. And he also tried to raid his brain for the secret formula and also hijacked his mind. The point being is that, like Mr. Krabs, Plankton has done his fair share of good and bad deeds. However, he does have plenty more bad deeds than Mr. Mr. Krabs does, despite his greed, thus ranking him as significantly more evil of the two restaurant owners. Prepare for a clash with Triton because he's up next. Neptune's son, he was originally a swell kid. While his father wanted to just smite and cause destruction to the mortals, he was working at creating a vaccine for diseases. After being caged by his father for being too nice, he grew cold and hostile towards him as well as the world around him. When SpongeBob freed him, he went on a rampage across town, destroying everything just to show off his new powers, and even locked up Neptune and his friends. Now granted, he does make up with his dad, but this was after he expressed approval of Triton using his powers for evil. Finally learn to use your god powers. I heard that this list was lacking a well-known ghost, as in the Flying Dutchman. The specter that haunts Bikini Bottom, he can be either someone who just loves scaring folks or forcing them to serve on his ghostly crew and eating them if they fail too often. He even does deals with others for their souls, like when he gave Mr. Krabs the ability to talk with money for the price of his soul. He even acts like the Grim Reaper, taking the dead to Davy Jones' locker, like he did with Mr. Krab and SpongeBob. He even turned SpongeBob and Patrick into Ghost after they disturbed his resting place and accidentally destroying his beard with a lawnmower. He's certainly a formidable and scary foe. However, despite being a ghost, he still has some human traits. He's saddened by the fact that others aren't scared of him and even thanks SpongeBob for helping him get his groove back. He's happy to teach Plankton all of his tricks and tips of being a ghost. He's also a ghost of his word, giving SpongeBob and Patrick three wishes in return for his dining sock. While you could potentially leave an encounter with him alive, we really don't recommend risking it. Up next are our two movie-exclusive villains, the first one being Dennis from the original SpongeBob SquarePants movie. Hired by Plankton, he only had one goal, and that is to kill SpongeBob and Patrick before they get Neptune's crown back to Bikini Bottom. On his way, he ends up meeting up with the gas station attendants and the dive bar's patrons, with both encounters ending with him beating up the people there. When he eventually reaches his targets, he isn't much better, happily ripping off their fake mustaches, degrading them, and reveling in the fear that they have when he's about to stomp on them. Sure, he was eventually stopped by the Cyclops, but that was only temporary, as he returned as the two rode back to Bikini Bottom on David Hasselhoff's back, continuing to try and kill them. He's certainly more than eager to continue his job of being a bounty hunter and is more than ruthless enough for the task, earning him the rank of being our fifth most evil being in the sea. 
Moving on to the second movie, we have Burger Beard. Now, in terms of villains, his motive doesn't really seem that hostile and cruel. He just wants to sell burgers on the beach, and he even has some friends with the seagulls that surround him, even if he can be annoyed by their antics at times. Who wants some? Hot wing! Sure, the burgers he was selling were done by stealing Mr. Krabs formula, but that doesn't mean the end of Bikini Bottom, right? Well, no, it means just that. Without Krabby Patties, the place falls into anarchy, becoming a set piece that you see out of Mad Max. Society depends on these burgers, and Burger Beer knows it, now caring if it's an unhappy ending for SpongeBob and his friends. In fact, when they try to reclaim the formula, he just sends them to a place where they could be eaten. He even fights for his right to keep the formula by using a ship to blast him away with cannonballs. He may not be as outwardly cruel as Dennis, but for someone knowing he's causing the apocalypse in Bikini Bottom and not caring, that definitely ranks him very high up on our list. With our top three evil beings, let's add in Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy's other enemy, Man Ray. Being locked up in their cave, SpongeBob and Patrick release him after tricking them into believing he's a good guy. After successfully duping them, he instantly goes after a bank and tries to rob it. That said, due to just how the tickle belt he was stuck to affected his mind, he ends up blowing his chance and just opens a bank account with checks that have kitten faces on them. Despite this stumble, he's still a real threat, being able to take over Bikini Bottom in an evil future. He even teamed up with the Dirty Bubble to cause either mischief or crimes across the town. He can be very evil when he needs to. That said, he doesn't get any higher up on this list thanks to the fact he seems to have a life outside of being evil. He apparently has a job as a vending machine restock worker. He also seems to have gone to college and had friends with someone from high school happily chatting up with her. He even has dreams of just going on vacation when he rents out Squidward's house. Despite how civil he can be at times, he's still very much, as Mermaid Man says, EVIL! Our silver medal of pure evil goes to Plankton's evilest family member, Plankton Amor. He attacks the town over and over again with his pet jellyfish dragon. He plans on taking over King Crab's kingdom, Bikini Bottomshire, destroying it with his dragon until he gets his way. He even ends up kidnapping King Crab's daughter, Princess Pearl, and plans on returning her for the keys to the kingdom. Of course, if these demands aren't met, he would just kill her, showing just how ruthless he is. In terms of Plankton, he's much more ambitious and crueler as a result of this. He ends up coming very close to achieving his goals, and only fails thanks to Sponge on befriending the dragon with the Krabby Patty. The only reason he isn't any higher is thanks to just how weak he is on his own, with magic only strong enough to tickle people. Of course, he's still no laughing matter. Anyone that's capable of getting a dragon to obey them and attack a village on their behalf shouldn't be taken as a joke. For the most evil being in Bikini Bottom, we don't have just a single being, but rather an entire race, the Jellians. These fake jellyfish aliens could have come from Invasion of the Body Snatchers with just how creepy they are. They're able to latch onto host and create alien versions of these familiar friends. What SpongeBob thought was just a pet that he and Patrick, who's actually his alien self due to being captured, were gonna hand out, ended up accidentally leading them to their prey. These aliens all serve under Overlord, bringing her the captured fish for her to presumably eat. They are essentially a parasite, hijacking their brains and bodies and turning them into followers of the Jellians. They seemingly have no goal in life other than to reproduce and expand their species, even if it means destroying others. Given just how powerful and dangerous they can be, getting very close to destroying all of Bikini Bottom's residents, save for SpongeBob and Sandy, we think it's only fitting to give this entire race a spot as the most evil threat in the world of SpongeBob. And with that, that's our list of all the foes and Bikini Bottom. But what do you guys think? Do you agree with our list? Let us know. And if you want the full morality ranking of Bikini Bottom, check out our main SpongeBob Good to Evil episode. Be sure to hit that notification bell, and most importantly, stay wicked.